let's quick talk a little bit about other kind of damage uh, that you can receive from uh, no surgery. Um, damage that the doctors won't mention to you. Um, so it's unfortunately there are some pages here I haven't translated them to English. Uh, <clears throat> but this is adhesion. Uh, and if the surgeon don't put packing inside the nose after the surgery, the, the wounds can heal in a way so that, um, for example, the, the middle turbinate here can connect to the, to the septum and to the lateral wall. Um, and that could cause uh, a lot of pain um, and it's also a risk to fix that afterwards. Next injury that can happen is a septal perforation. And that can happen if the surgeon removes too much cartilage uh, during a septoplasty. If he removes too much, uh, there will become a hole and that hole can uh, become infected. And bacteria can enlarge the hole and uh, yeah, it's not easy to fix afterwards. You can try to put a plastic or a rubber button, but uh, it won't be perfect. Another reason for um, septal perforation is also if the surgeon destroys the septal mucosa during the septoplasty. If he uh, tears the mucosa, uh, the cartilage uh, within the septal wall will not get um, nutrition and blood supply. So in time that uh, cartilage will die and a hole will appear and that hole can become very large. Some complications um, you can have is disturbed um, air flow in the nose. You can get the whistling sound, uh, the mucosa will become dry you can get bleeding, you can get crusting, uh, you can get the nasal obstruction or at least it feels like nasal obstruction because you have destroyed the thermoreceptors, the nerve endings in the septal mucosa. Uh, and you can get a nasal collapse uh, with the appearance change of the nose. Uh, I leave to you to read the rest uh, yourself here. Another thing that can happen to you when you have partial or total turbinate reduction with scissor and scalpel is that you can, you can have a hole into your sinuses, uh, into your maxillary sinus. So um, the thing is that the surgeon, he cuts this part uh, and removes the tissue. And he uses a tool like this one here and he bends and break off some parts and if he comes too close to the wall here when he's going to remove the turbinate bone he can easily uh, by accident remove some parts of the of the wall here and then you have a, a hole into your sinus and that you can't do anything about that in my case this hole is is quite small. Uh, I haven't been able to measure it really. Uh, but I, I would say it's probably not bigger than a one and a half centimeters or something. Um, but I think in some cases the entire wall is gone between the nasal captivity and uh, the sinus. And of course that will cause you a lot of problems and you can't do anything about it. So this again is another reason to never ever have partial turbinate removal reduction with scissor or scalpel. If the surgeon in my case for example had been using radio frequency this could never have happened or the, the likelihood of it happening would be extremely small. So yeah, that method is, is so fucking stupid. 
and here we have some images uh, of my nostril four years after the surgery. The damage uh, you see here and the damage I'm going to explain is, um, is not directly from the surgery, but it's secondary to the surgery. So like I've been saying to you, if you remove the turbinates, you also destroy the immune system of the nose. Uh, the nose will always become open and that will cause uh, dryness and that dryness eventually can cause inflammation, infection. Um, so you see the white part here, that's, that's not how a mucose membrane should look. This is either um, inflamed or infected or there is some kind of degeneration and during this time Anna still have problems with pain and discomfort in, in the nose when I breathe. It burns, uh, it's a little bit better now but it still burns and during this time I had tremendous pain burns and I was extremely dry uh, the mucous membrane was bleeding so that's a secondary damage and the more you destroy on the turbinate of the turbinates the the, the bigger chance uh, the bigger risk there is that you will have this this problem and here is also another problem that can uh, appear so if you remove the turbinates within the, the green circle here, the inferior turbinates, there will be a jet stream of air flowing along the nasal floor and that will hit the back part of the nose. It will cause dry throat, it will cause a lot of discomfort here, pain. It will cause um, a wound to appear and eventually you'll have scarring and that's what you see here. This is the back part in my nose and this the white is scarring. Let's talk a little bit more about septoplasty and specifically the consequences on the septomucosa. Uh, most people don't think about this, they just uh, sign up for septoplasty and don't understand that this will affect the state, status of the septomucosa. Um, most of, often, or most often, but very often, the, the septomucosa tears. Uh, and if we look on the right image here, we can see uh, on the left side you have the cartilage wall and on the right side here you have the mucosa and the perichondrium layer. So to be able to do, to perform septoplasty, uh, you need to remove the mucosa from the wall here. And when this happens, it's, yeah, it's very easy that the uh, mucosa will tear. And uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that later, the consequences. But if we look on the left image first here, we can see that uh, the cartilage wall uh, on this side. Uh, and, and then we can see that there are a small thin layer called the perichondrium here. And on the other side, on the left side here, we have the septal mucosa. And this is quite common that the uh, surgeon fails to, to remove the septal mucosa and the perichondrium together as, as one layer together. Uh, if he removes just the septal mucosa uh, and leaves the perichondrium uh, or partly leaves the perichondrium somewhere, uh, it's, it's very easy that the uh, mucosa will tear. Um, because most strength is in the perichondrium layer. So without perichondrium, it's very easy that you will have a tear. And um, if the tear is in a horizontal level, it's, it's, it's not good, but it's better that, than if it's in a vertical, a vertical line. Because m many blood vessels, they, they go from the back side in the nose to the front side. Um, and if you tear the mucosa vertically from, from the top to the bottom to the nasal floor, um, you will destroy many more blood vessels, many more nerve nerves and everything. Um, so it's not good either way, but um, horizontal tear is less, less bad than a vertical one. 
Also, you can look on the right image again and you can see the, the septum mucosa here is quite thick now. Uh, but after septoplasty, it's very common that these mucosa become paper thin. It's just, there's no thick blood vessels within anymore. There are only small capillaries. Uh, and yeah, the mucosa will become dry and numb. It can't um, swell up um, anymore together with the turbinates. So it will become just passive, inactive. Um, and yeah, you will have problems. The nose will become open. Another thing that also can become destroyed is the septal swell body. I've been talking a little bit about that before, but the septal swell body is an area up here. Uh, it's sometimes it's called the fourth turbinate of the nose. Uh, it's an area that have a lot, lot of blood vessels um, and they have a lot of uh, goblet cells that produce mucus. It has a lot of uh, thermoreceptor nerve endings. So it's important to sense the airflow. Uh, it's important for the immune system in the nose uh, and it's important to regulate the airflow to the upper part of the nose. And it does this in combination with the um, turbinates and uh, the other parts of the septal wall, the septal mucosa. So when, when those parts swell up, the septal swell body also swell up and uh, vice versa. So a, a very common reason to have a septoplasty performed is, is if you have a septal spur. A septal spur, um, it's something that could be, could be normal because m many people have it. And it's a ridge between, you can see the here that are three plates. So they crash together and form a ridge more like uh, similar to how a mountain range is uh, is shaped and designed um, so yeah and this ridge can go all the way back here to the middle turbinate uh, so if it goes all the way back here to the middle turbinate that means that the surgeon need to remove the mucosa uh, from the septal wall all the way back here so there will be a really big area of the septal mucosa that will be affected from the septoplasty. And the, the bigger area, uh, the more problem you can have, especially if uh, the surgeon uh, tears the mucosa. So if we look on the location of the septal swell body, we could see it here on an x-ray up here first. And I have uh, made a circle here, so you can see on this image. So the septal spur is located here. So it's really close to the septal swell body here. So yeah, and you need to remove some extra uh, cartilage, uh, some extra septal mucosa here as well. You can't just remove it um, close to tight around the, the septal spur. You need to have some extra room to, to move around the um, surgical instruments. Um, yeah, so in my case, uh, the, the septal mucosa has become paper thin. The, my septal swell body is, um, yeah, it's more or less totally destroyed. I have explained this, uh, I have showed images on this uh, in, uh, in, in this video here. You can see up to the left here. Um, so if you want to know more about this, you can uh, watch that, that video. But if we look on the right image here, we can see the septal mucosa to the right here. First, it should be shaped in an arc like this. And it's not, it's not longer sh shaped like that because a surgeon probably removed cartilage up here. And you can see where the septal spur was located before because it's, it's kind of like a trench here now. Uh, and you can see some probably old parts in here from the, um, the septal spur. And the mucosa is so thin now, so that those parts almost perf perforate the, the mucosa. So in my case, this mucosa here is passive, it's inactive. It, it doesn't have any bigger blood vessels anymore. 
it can't swell up anymore. Um, so the nose is just extremely open all the time. It's dry. I have no airflow sensation here. Uh, so he probably has also teared some, some nerves. And if we look on, on this image, this is my uh, x-ray before the surgery. You can see the, the here was my septal spur. And here is the location of the septal swell body. So you can see how close it is to the, the septal swell body. So of course this area will be affected. And this image to the left here, you can see before the surgery, how thick the septal mucosa was. Uh, and this is after. It has become extremely thin. And this image also shows a little bit here um, that that part is shaved. So yeah, this is something you you need to understand also before deciding about having a septoplastic or not. So some some other complications um, that the doctor won't mention to you. Um, in my case, my my the appearance of my nose changed. Uh, for the worse so you can have asymmetry of your nose bumpiness um, you can have a narrower nose at least in the in, in the middle part of the nose um, you can have a valve collapse i have a small valve collapse i'm going to show you images of, on that later and uh, you can have a septal perforation i've been telling you about this uh, before here um, it can be directly from the surgery if the surgeon removes too much too much cartilage or it could be uh, afterwards uh, if he tears the mucosa on both sides in left and right nostril if it if it performs septoplasty in left nostril and in the right nostril and if he tears the mucosa on both sides um, the um, the cartilage structure will not get nutrition anymore um, so in time it will die and it will yeah, it, a hole will be created and that hole could be extremely large and yeah there's nothing really you can do about a large hole uh, small holes you can fix maybe but any anyway the mucosa will become thin numb and non-functional um, and yeah the septal swell body i told you about that before so i leave for you to read um the rest yourself here um if we go for the next this is my images here so you can see this is how my nose looked before the surgery is quite uh quite even shaped here uh and this is how it looks after and in my case uh, it wasn't too bad i have seen people who have become extremely much uh, more damaged by by the surgery uh, so i i have a small valve collapse here um, my nose has become the, um, uh, more narrow here as well um, it's not as wide as before so yeah this is also something you 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 need to understand uh, something that the doctors won't won't tell you